Geeks and Gamers put it best when they call this show straight up retarded. As tradition with this show, got a drink in order to numb the pain. So we have the fifth episode of The Acolyte. And it's awful. Obviously, it's still awful. Although I will say this. It's by default the least worst episode of the show so far. And that's probably because this is the one that has the least amount of dialogue. This entire episode is basically one big fight scene. And I've seen people... I, I saw a bunch of tweets when I was getting a picture for the background and for the thumbnail. People posting on Twitter about how amazing the fight scene was. And it's not that good. Now, it's not awful. I will say at first... It was pretty bad because it was shot from behind, uh, from the other side of a bunch of trees. So you can only see about 70% of the choreography. And there were some dumbass moments in it. Like they do the prequel thing, especially what happened in a lot in Revenge of the Sith. Where they were like waiting their turn in order to strike in order to try to strike him, even to the point where he was striking somebody else, the guy with the yellow lightsaber had a clean had a clean shot to hit him in the back and decided to twirl his lightsaber around like a dumbass before actually striking him. And also, his helmet apparently fucks with the lightsabers, I guess. It was like, he would, like, hit the lightsabers. And at first, I thought he was cutting, like, cutting the lightsabers in half with his blade. But... Because they were, like, sparking out and everything. But then they turned back on after about 10 seconds. So, what was he doing to those lightsabers? And apparently it was, like, his helmet and also his hand was, like, doing so. Was he using the Force to fuck with the lightsabers? It, it does. It's not explained. And I'll, I'll get the twist out of here right off the bat before I get to the rest of the episode. Yeah, I called... Me and everybody else and their mother called who the villain was... It was the Ezra Miller-looking motherfucker. Although the sad thing is, he's probably the only good actor in this fucking show, and he's wasted on this garbage character that no one gives a shit about in this garbage show that no one gives a shit about. And speaking of that, something I want to bring up is I just did a short last night about uh, Disney now using bots yet again to try to boost the audience score. Because it was, I saw clearly on the date, so you'll see why I circled the date in there as well, is because I took those screenshots yesterday, June 25th, and they were saying they were audience reviews from June 26th. And hell, most of them didn't even have names on them. It was to the point where you could tell it was bots. One of them literally just said audience member on the top. I don't think it was in the screenshot, but it was there. And those are the ones that are on the top of it. Or, like, the only ones that show up but until you click on all of them. When it used to be, it was, like, all, like, one star at most. So, you can see both Disney and Rotten Tomatoes are trying to fuck with it. But it hasn't worked because the show is still sitting down at 13%. And, again, to put that in perspective, the holiday special's at, like, 21% audience score. And that thing is one of the biggest trash fires ever put on screen. So that tells you all you need to know about this show. Ugh. And then you also have the Disney shows, like, even sending death threats to Star Wars Theory because he's not shilling for this fucking garbage heap of a show. And people like me and him who don't succumb to Disney's trash used to this at this point you should see all the videos I did on the garbage Percy Jackson fans I sent a bunch of death threats after I did after I didn't show for the garbage casting and that kept happening for the two years until the show was eventually released and then so back to the episode yeah, it, once it got to the one-on-one -on -one fights it was a little better it was trying desperately to recapture what the prequels did. And here's the thing about the prequel fights. Is that, yeah, they're flashy, they're fast. They're not always that great. Hell, even Duel of the Fates, which is my personal favorite lightsaber duel. It has problems with the choreography. Or maybe I've just been, um, uh, shad-pilled. Uh, that shad adversity he does is fight scene autopsy things. Maybe I just succ succumbed to that and was, pa and was paying attention. But if... 
your excuse for a fight scene being bad or not perfect is just don't pay too close attention, that's an issue. Because it'll have times where people are like spinning around when they don't need to be, their backs are wide open, they don't take the shots, or when it's like a 2v1 battle, they're like standing still, or fuck the duel with Palpatine and the four Jedi, where he, where the two Jedi literally just stand still and wait to get killed. And then you have stuff in the Anakin and Obi-Wan fight, like them twirling their lightsabers around like a bunch of dumbasses for five seconds before actually swinging at each other. And I know people have come up with excuses for that, and no, it's just a stupid-ass moment. But I will say this fight scene was still miles ahead of the fights from The Rise of Skywalker. I will say I liked the the lightsaber duel in Force Awakens still. I more liked the Finn versus Kylo Ren fight because, yeah, that's just kind of two dudes swinging at each other. But in the case of Finn, you give him a pass because he has no lightsaber training. So it kind of makes sense in that context. I didn't expect a big flashy action scene there. I expected something more along to the lines of the original trilogy. Slower choreography, but you can feel the hit. Here, you get the flashy choreography, but it's not nearly as fast as you think, and it has, and the main problem with this fight scene is that I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit about any of these characters to the point where I was legitimately rooting for this Sith to kill them all. And I got my wish. <laughs> All except for one, they all die. And then you have the young Padawan, who's a, I guess is supposed to be like an Ahsoka insert, because she has two green lightsabers, one of which she holds backwards. Because that, again, the, I've never liked the reverse grip. It's always been, it's always looked stupid. And all it does is just leave your chest exposed. It's, what are you doing? Even in The Force Unleashed, I played the PS2 and Wii versions where he held the lightsaber forward. So, yeah. And then, I already mentioned the twist where it's, uh, uh, the Ezra Miller looking guy who I, which everybody called. But, and then something I didn't mention in my last video is Kiyadi Mundi. Because I convinced myself until I heard about it later on that that wasn't Kiyadi Mundi. Because, you know, he's not supposed to be born yet. And also the fact that in The Phantom Menace, he makes the claim that the Sith have been extinct for a millennium. And yet he is here, active in this show, and we have been introduced to a Sith. And this takes place 100 years before The Phantom Menace. In other terms, about one-tenth of a millennium. I have no idea why they shoved Kiyadi Mooney into this. It was just for shitty fan service and nobody gave a shit about hell. I don't even know how many people actually knew that was Kiyadi Mooney as soon as he showed up. I had to convince myself that it wasn't. I, I saw him and I thought, that can't be. It can't be. But it was. And even to the point where there's an, a, a Jedi who looks like Plo Koon... I don't remember the species name, but they had to, but the Star Wars, somebody who, who worked on the, went on Twitter and said, no, sorry, it's this other character. The fact that they're literally apologizing for not breaking canon. These are the people who are running this shit show of a franchise. Now, episode three was already the straw that broke the camel's back. This, there was the point of no return. The Star Wars, that was the moment that officially buried Star Wars in the ground and took a piss on its grave. That's, that, that was that episode. The next one was really bad. It was mostly just boring. It was a whatever episode. Had that been episode three, it would not have been nearly as reviled. But after episode three, people were just done with this show. Like me. I'm only watching it because I, I kind of have, because people want to see me rage on it, I guess. People want to see me rage about this fucking show, so I guess give the people what they want. Ugh. They apparently also want to see me drink myself into a stupor. Which apparently the writers did before writing this shit show. And so the story, so what are we at with the story? We're at a dead end. No, nothing has fucking happened. Well, I guess at the end of development is May switches places with Osha. Don't know what she's trying to do here. After her master was literally trying to kill her, and the Jedi were protecting her. You figure that one out. I don't care if they were asked to bring her in alive. If he wants to kill her, wash your hands of the job. Let him do it. I, that's what I would be doing. I don't care if they're a Jedi. 
Even though they're pretty shitty Jedi. <laughs> and uh, then this dark side asswipe uses force healing. Now one, the, now one, this pretty much breaks the argument that people made that force it, that uh, Obi Wan couldn't heal Darth or er, <laughs> Darth couldn't heal Qui Gon because that was a force power that hadn't been discovered yet. So that gets tossed out the window. And I still hate Rise of Skywalker for introducing that fucking move, which should not be a thing. And two, a dark side user and someone who has literally pronounced himself to be a Sith having force healing? Doesn't that kind of contradict the entire point of the Sith as a whole? What am I missing here? So yeah, this show, like I said at the beginning, it's straight up retarded. There is no brain cells being used to write this show, and I think the writers don't fucking care. Honestly, I can't figure out if the writers are just absolutely just awful at their job. Well, they obviously are, but I can't tell if that's all it is, or maybe if they were deliberately trying... I, I still can't figure out if they're not deliberately trying to destroy this franchise, because all because of, of how much they've destroyed it, just the ways they've destroyed it almost seemed deliberate. I mean, people claim back in the early 2000s that the prequels destroyed Star Wars, but even if you don't like those movies, which I really don't either, that didn't destroy Star Wars. We had a bunch of great video games. We were getting the Clone Wars, which I think is a bit overrated, but I still think it's a good show. And... But what do we have for Star Wars now? We get this political slop. The next movie we're getting is The Mandalorian and Grogu, which I would be surprised if that even made a paltry amount of money. We're getting Star Wars... St Star Lord? Star Wars Outlaws as a video game, which is also set to tank. Because, again, more political garbage being shoved into the game. We have nothing left to look forward to for Star Wars anymore. It's all political slop that no one wants to deal with anymore. This franchise is done. So thank you so much for watching. And once again, you drink to numb the pain.